Remember what you see is not a mystery, but a rental girl. It is true that Renta Nanny has had no clients for two days, but why should we have to look after you? Because it's your fault that I'm ill. If you hadn't transported me to the street where another but a towel, I wouldn't have this terrible coat. And Mr. Claypool, will you please get off my feet? Oh. But you were destined to become ill. The great soothsayer foretold it. It says here, because your planets are not in conjunction, you can expect a cold reception. Oh, <laughs> those hardest ghosts weren't written by soothsayers, you superstitious medieval twit. He thinks that, that astrology is some kind of magic. He believes everything he reads. Oh. It's too bad that Hazel had to go to a witch's convention in the spirit world. If you had one of her potions, you need never feel ill again. If I had one of her potions, I should never feel anything again. Oh, my head. When is Hazel coming back? Oh, no, F for the flowers. No, no. Yes! if you must sing, would you please stand out in the garden where the neighbours can see you? I don't want them to think I'm tortured, and you? You are uh. just jealous because the critics gave me rave notices after our last amateur uh. concert. I intend to follow their advice and prepare myself for a professional singing career. I'll spend every spare moment practicing. Mm -hmm. Song, oh, jest, oh, and oh, oh, And that is why we have oh. to look after Mr. Husband. It is not our job. You used to be a baby's nurse, so you're well qualified to look after him. <laughs> and you can stop following me about, you fugitive from a pantomime. Mrs. Wife should not have come so close. Is she not aware that you have infectious Germans crawling all over you? The word is germs, you continental spectre. Katsooks, I have heard of these invisible germs. They are dangerous to mortals. They must be killed. Now, oh, Mr. Claypool, the modern scientific way of killing germs is by using this. An excellent idea. Oh, what an idiot. Now, hey, now what are you doing here, Mr. Claypool? Will you stop hitting me, Mr. Claypool? <laughs> Very funny, oh, 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 not amusing, oh, oh, oh. How can a sick person get any rest with that racket? <laughs> Try and be calm, my friend. Soon you shall rest in peace. Mr. Claypool, a rocking spell is needed. Oh. Oh, Mr. Claypool, I must say I find that very soothing. If I close my eyes, I shall soon drop off. <gasps> Soothsayer has predicted the future for Mr. Sneaker, a Capricorn goat. It says she should achieve a long-standing ambition. There are surprises in store for her and for her family and friends. <laughs> she will be faced with making an important choice which could affect her whole life. It seems that Mr. Husband can also predict the future. He did drop off. <laughs> I may as well tell you, Mr. Soames, that hiring you is entirely my wife's idea. I strongly disapprove of having my neighbours investigated by a private detective. But your wife tells me that the meek and strange behaviour is making her a nervous wreck. And now, Rose has let this prey on her mind for months until it's become an obsession. Well, I grant you the Meekers are a couple of fruitcakes, but there's absolutely nothing sinister about Nothing them. sinister? A few days ago, she physically attacked you. He wore a white sheet and pretended to be a ghost. Arthur, they're trying to frighten us away from here, and I want to know why. You will, Mrs. Perkins. I'll record my observations on tape and give you daily reports. Yes, but... I don't we... worry about me being seen. With this new electronic device, I can now hear a whispered conversation at a range of 25 yards. Oh, what kind of batteries does it use? Quarter past 11. Sorry. Hm. Forgot to switch it on. Mika 
sent me to get these throat lozenges. Here, those are mine. If I don't take those, I might lose my voice. That is why he sent me to get them. <laughs> oh, cheeky blighter. Oh, it's no use. I used to know an opera singer whose voice was so pure it could break a glass. I've always wanted to do that. That must be the ambition the great soothsayer foretold. So, achieve it, you shall. Ooh. Henceforth, your voice will break glass. <laughs> Ow! Ah, I did it! I did it! Oh, I'm sure I can see higher than that! <clears throat> Just taking a look at the makers, sir. Never realized that Mrs. Mika had such a powerful voice. Amazing. I wish I could get a closer look at what's going on in there. Their windows are pretty grubby, aren't they? <laughs> Want your windows clean, lady? All the nursing in the world isn't going to cure this cold. It's getting worse. Mr. Claypole, can't you cure it with one of your spells? Alas, I have no spells strong enough to cure the common cold. But I can cure the symptoms. Henceforth, you need only say, I am feeling stronger. And you shall feel stronger. Whatever you say, so shall you be. Oh, all right. I am feeling stronger. Oh, oh so I am. <laughs> I can breathe easily. Here, Miss Novak, the spell works. Speak up, I can't hear you. I can't speak any louder, I'm a little hoarse. <laughs> 11 40 a.m. I'm now outside one of the Mika's windows. Inside the room, I can see a horse sitting up in bed. The horse is wearing. Paisley pyjamas. Mr. Claypole. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. My eyesight's worse than I thought. I shall continue investigating after I've fetched my spare glasses. You with your rotten spells. All you've given me is a spell of ill health. My nose is blocked, my eyes are watering, my ears are buzzing. Oh. Fret not, friend. Uh, uh, this time, I personally uh, shall cure your symptoms with a multiple spell. <clears throat> ears, nose, eyes. You shall see, hear, smell with full efficiency. Well? Hey, Mr. Capo, where are you? Here, here. Ah! Oh! What is it? Oh, you idiot, you've got the spells mixed up. Master Mika, look at me. I am looking at you. Thanks to your spell, I'm seeing through my ears, hearing through my nose, and smelling with my eyes. Eh, God, this is most unfortunate. Multiple spells are very difficult to cancel. Oh. I shall have to think of some way of returning your senses to normal. This may take considerable time. Let us do it! Oh, I can't bear listening to that again. Uh, oh, what a relief. I can't hear a thing. I shall continue investigating after I've fetched my spare glasses. Oh. The only fact that your investigation has yielded so far is that you can't see straight without your glasses. You'll have to do better than that. What have I ever done to deserve all this? I, I'm, I'm a simple man. All, all I want is a little piece. Yeah, you can have this little piece. It's all that's left of our chandelier. Oh, ah. oh I must remember to walk the other way around. I'm a little short-sighted in this ear. Oh. Oh. oh, Ethel, this is neither the time nor the place. Oh, oh, it's you. Yeah. 
Now that's hard and play with your pole. <laughs> Mrs. Wife is in the garden. <coughs> you must stay and rest here while Mr. Claypole is cleaning the bedroom. Uh, about time that bungling spirit found a way of cancelling this spell. Oh, I might as well listen to some music while I'm here. Twelve o'clock. Mika is in his living room. I don't know how to describe this, but he... He appears to be smelling a radio program. He's now listening to a book. I'd like to speak to my husband alone. Would you mind leaving? I am afraid that I cannot leave a sick patient. Don't argue with me. Sneeze off. <gasps> Harold, could I have a word in, in your nose? <laughs> oh, hello, Ethel. I got this from the garden for you, darling. Oh, it's lovely here. Have a smell. Uh, oh, I can't smell much with this cold. Oh, poor Harold, how do you feel? Oh, I'm fed up. Every time I lie down, I go blind in one ear, and when I close my eyes, I can't breathe. Oh. Yeah, what did you want to talk to me about, Ethel? Well, Harold, I was thinking, you know one of your best tenants is that big theatrical producer? Oh, Mr McNulty, yes. Yeah, well, I wondered if you'd ask him to give me an audition. Oh, that's it. Well, I've been at death's door all week. You've been too busy to cook my meals. Now you're all lovey-dovey because you want a favour. <laughs> well, of all the pity-minded, just because you feel neglected, are you willing to risk my chance of a singing career? Oh, I'm up to here with your singing. If you think a career is more important than being a wife, well, then you may have to make a choice between the two. I'm going back upstairs to bed. Oh, all right, Harold Meeker, if you won't ask the producer about an audition, I'll go and see him myself. be faced with making an important choice which could affect your whole life and the choice is between her marriage and a career <gasps> this is a pretty kettle of Pisces I must see to it that the producer is not impressed with mistress Mika Secretary telephoned and made an appointment for me this morning, Mr. McNulty. It's very good. Was it something I said? I think I'm going bananas. Ooh. Investigations have revealed nothing to account for the Meekers' alleged intimidation of their neighbours. I think it's time I asked a few tactful questions about their background. What are you, a pooping tom? Uh, Borough Council Records Department, Miss. Uh, we're making a survey in depth about local residents. And I'd like some information about the occupants of this house. Firstly, I'd like to know <gasps> what is the nature of Mr. Meeker's... Uh... Was it something I said? Oh, oh what is wrong? The producer wouldn't see me. That's what it's wrong. And I can guess why. Harold must have rung him up and told him not to. Eureka! I have thought of a spell to return your senses what? to normal. Oh, that time, here. <laughs> what kind of spell is that, Mr. Claypool? Where are you going around? Hey, now, you'll be careful that bell. Cross me. Keep out here. Oh, oh, ah, uh, it's done. Uh, oh, well done, Mr. Claypool. <laughs> oh, my cold feels better, too. Oh, you know, it was feeling so rotten that made me have that row with Ethel this morning. Oh, but I shall make it up to her. 
bless her heart. Oh, hello, Ethel. You're back early. Here, give us a kiss. I'm sorry about this. You horrible brute! Was it something I said? Ah, thank you, Miss Novak. Well, if I... If I take it easy for the rest of the day, I should be fit enough to work tomorrow. You spooks might as well go back to the rent ghost office. I think that Rent and Annie have no more clients. But I will be only too pleased to help you with any other rent or ghost business, Mr. Claypole. I am most grateful, Mr. Mara. You are just the spirit we need. <laughs> Four o'clock. Thank you. Just because you told Mr. McNulty not to audition me this but afternoon, effort, that, and don't but... bother to deny it, you needn't think you won. I just phoned his secretary and said there'd been some mistake, and she made another appointment for me. I will join you at the rent ghost office later, Mr. Mara, but first I must ensure that Mr. Smeaker does not yet again risk sacrificing her marriage for a career. Well, don't blame me if you make a fool of yourself, Ethel. You know how you go to pieces whenever you meet important people? You get tongue-tied and you can't think of a thing to say. <laughs> My dear Harold, I know exactly what I'm going to say and exactly how to say it. I've rehearsed it so many times, I could do it backwards. Then that is how you shall do it, Mr. Smeaker. Backwards. <laughs> Goodbye. I'm seeing him at four o'clock. Not the time! <laughs> Oh, I see my secretary has been taking care of you. I'm sorry I was in conference when you arrived. <laughs> uh, Mika Ethel is named my. Nothing but Mr. You meet to pleasure greatly gives it. him seeing I'm. Goodbye. <laughs> well, I've always thought she was a bit backwards, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> you are determined to prevent me having that audition, aren't you? I suppose you told one of your spooks to put a jinx on me. Well, you won't get away with now, that. Now, Ethel, I swear I know nothing about... Oh! Dear Mr McNulty, due to circumstances I'll explain later, I've twice been prevented from auditioning for you. Therefore, I'm enclosing a cassette recording of my singing for you to listen to. Yours sincerely... Ethel Mika. <laughs> Everything your investigator has seen at the Mika so far confirms everything I've said all along. They're a pair of harmless nutters. 
There's absolutely no evidence that they're trying to drive us out of our home. Oh, no. What about all that shrieking at the top of her voice? We haven't had a moment's peace for days, and she's broken half my best glassware. Ah, well, yes. We might do something about that. Let's go round and ask them to foot the bill. Right. A little red riding horse said, Oh, Grandma! What a big maid you got! Oh, ooh, the Perkins are coming! Big... Queen, oh, take that nag nag into the kitchen! Oh, oh, my, you're crying a nag! Don't argue with me! Sneeze off! <laughs> and Mr. Claypole, forget about that astrology rubbish about protecting Harold. I do not want my neighbours to know about you spooks. Out! Nay, I refuse to leave until the omens are favourable. Fret not, I shall hide in Master Mika's clothes. <laughs> Mr. Claypole, what are you doing? Yeah, Behold, a mini clay pole. <laughs> uh, 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 hey, well, don't tell me you're allergic to flowers, too. Nay, hey, you're talcum powder. <laughs> uh, Bless you. Here, blow your nose. Here, here, here. Stop wriggling about like that. Oh, Mr. Claypole. <laughs> Somebody, uh, somebody. Oh, so ticklish. Oh, Mr. Claypole. <laughs> oh, 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 Mr. Man. Mr. Claypole. <laughs> Mr. Mika. Oh, yes. No, darling, don't wander about the kitchen. Come and sit on my lap. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's the uh, maid talking to her boyfriend. No, don't jump over the kitchen table. I really came to see you about that. Oh, oh, yes. oh. It's the first time I've ever seen anyone sneeze from his navel. We came to see you about that <laughs> dreadful... Take your nose out of the sink. No, don't drink the dish, water. I think a boyfriend's been at the cooking, Sherry. <laughs> uh, you were saying? Well, it's about your singing. It's very loud and it does go on for a very long time. And frankly, yesterday, my nerves were in shreds. I was almost in tears. <laughs> oh, you think that's funny, do you? <laughs> no. Well, good, because it certainly isn't funny for us. It caused a great deal of inconvenience and ruined a lot of expensive glassware. <laughs> You'll, you'll laugh on the other side of your face when you have to pay for the damage. We'll see ourselves out. <laughs> Mr. Capo, come out of there! Here. Where are you? I have climbed into your sleeve. It is very hot in here. <laughs> Too hot, is it? Ethel, take the flowers out of that vase and bring it over here. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll soon cool you down. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sneaker, may we ask why you keep looking at your watch? You may, because it's too late for you to do anything about it now. I told you I wouldn't give up, didn't I? Well, I made another recording of my voice and I said it to the BBC radio. In one minute's time, they'll be broadcasting it on their new talent show. <laughs> uh, where's Mr. Husband? In the garden. Harold! <laughs> I got a surprise for you! I, I just can't understand it. The, the more upset we were, the more he laughed at us. He, he was enjoying it. That man Mika's a sadist. Perhaps now you'll stop saying I'm imagining things. Those two have got it in for us, Arthur, and I'm going to ask Mr. Soames to go on investigating until we find out why. Oh, no, not again! Many supernatural ghouls of the day. Heavy footsteps in your attic means a spectre telepathic is descending just to spirit you away. Hey! We are extraordinary fellas here at Rented Ghost. To be another Yuri Geller, come to the Rented Ghost. For a biography we ghost writers, I'm not forgetting a ghost script. An apparition crypt from deep inside a crypt. 
ring red's a ghost An apparition equipped from deep inside a crypt Ring red's a ghost